Hello, we will cover 2.6. Um, I think this is 2.6a because we will come back to this section um, in the next unit as well, okay? But for 2.6a, we're just gonna cover uh, certain combinations of functions and those are our arithmetic combinations. Mm -hmm. There is another kind of combination called a composition but those we will not talk about until we get into the next unit, okay? But for this unit, we just want to discuss um, what happens when you add, subtract, multiply, div or divide functions, okay? So um, just as two real numbers can be combined by the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, um, so can two functions of real numbers. Um, so for example, if you have the function f of x equal to 2x minus 3, and a second function, g of x equal to x squared minus one. Um, those can be combined using the sum, the difference, the product, or the quotient of those two functions. So for the sum of the two functions, you essentially have one function in parentheses, the plus, and then the second function in parentheses. But if you realize there's no exponent out here or a coefficient out here to apply or distribute, you do not need those parentheses. So this will become 2x minus 3. Now here you do have a plus 1 that needs to be distributed. But when you distribute that plus 1, you get plus 1x squared and negative 1. And so then if I combine my like terms, that's where we get x squared, positive 2x, and now a negative 4 from. Now, similarly, if I were to subtract the two functions, notice they have f in parentheses minus g in parentheses. Here, there's nothing to distribute and nothing to distribute and no exponent to apply. So this is just 2x minus 3. But here you have a negative 1 that has to get distributed. And when I distribute that, I'm going to get negative 1x squared and positive 1. And so when I combine my like terms, I end up with this negative x squared a positive 2x and negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, okay? And then finally, for the product, you're going to have f of x in parentheses times g of x in parentheses. We definitely must FOIL everything out. Um, so we FOIL those two, we FOIL these two, and then it just looks like they put all the terms in order from highest exponent to lowest exponent. This should be a three exponent and this should be a two exponent. Okay, and then finally the quotient, you would take the F function on top of the G function. And if these could factor, you would try to factor it. And it will only reduce if one of the factors match exactly. And since the numerator did not factor, none of these three match. Okay, so I can't really reduce this fraction. But we do know that with this down in the denominator, that that can never equal zero, which means x squared can never equal one or x can never equal plus or minus one. And that's why they have this condition over here on the side. Now, the domain of an arithmetic combination of functions, f and g, consists of all real numbers that are in common to both of the domains, okay? So what this means is that the domain of f plus g is the, the same as the domain of f minus g, which is the same as the domain of f times g. And that's the domain of f union with the domain of g. Oh no, what they have in common. So it's actually the intersections. Okay. And if you're gonna find the domain of f over g, it's going to be that same domain the intersection of the two uh, function domains, but you have to take out any values that would make g of x equal to zero, okay? So you do have to remove those values from your interval. So let's see um, what else they have for us. So it says, just by definition, the sum means, if you see this notation, it just means you're gonna take f of x plus g of x, which is this notation. If you see f minus g, it means f of x minus g of x. If you see them right next to each other, it means f times g. And if you see f over g, it's literally that the f function over the g function. Of course, your g function cannot equal zero. 
So here's example one. They gave us f of x, which is 2x plus 1, and g of x, which is x squared plus 2x minus 1. And they're asking us to find f plus g, then evaluate this when x equals 3. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just take f of x plus g of x. And that's what they've done here. They took f of x here, right? That's the function. And then they took g of x here. Excuse me. And then they're adding the two functions together in the middle. Now, since there's no exponents or nothing to distribute in the front, you can do away with those parentheses. There's no exponent here, but I do have a plus one that I need to distribute. So this will stay positive x squared, positive 2x, and negative 1. And then if you combine your like terms, you get x squared, um, 2x and 2x make 4x, and then 1 and negative 1 will cancel. And so you just get x squared plus 4x. Now if you're trying to evaluate that when x is equal to 3, you're just plugging in 3 for x. So 3 squared plus 4 times 3 is 9 plus 12, which does equal 21. Okay, so here we get into our practice uh, problems. So for number one, it says evaluate the function for f of x equal to x plus three and g of x equal to x squared um, minus two. And so what they want me to do is they want me to find this. Well, I have to remember that according to those definitions, this just means f of negative six plus g of negative six. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in negative six into f. So that would be negative six plus three. Then I'm gonna plug negative six into g. So that would be negative six squared minus two. And I'm gonna take this computations. So I'm gonna get negative three in this first bracket. And then here I'm gonna get positive 36 minus two. So I get negative three in the first bracket plus 34 in the second bracket. And then negative three plus 34 is just 31. Similarly for the, it's the same two functions, but now they're asking me to do f times g of eight. So remember the definitions of these, this just means f of eight times g of eight. So in this case, f of eight would be if I plugged in eight for x, then now I need to multiply when I plug in eight for x into g. So here I get 11 in the first box. Here I get 64 minus two, which is 11 in the first box still, and now 62 in the second box. And let's see what that product would be. Here, 11 times 62 is going to be 682. And so it is what it is. Even though it's a big number, you just do the computations and whatever the answer is, that's what it is. Okay. Um, don't ever second guess yourself because the answer doesn't look the way you thought it should or it might. Um, just do the computation and what it is, it is. Okay. This one is the more interesting question out of the group, although we do have five total problems, okay? But this one wants me to do all of them and notice it doesn't have the number that I'm gonna plug in. So I'm essentially just gonna try to simplify it as much as I can. Usually that means combining like terms. And in the case of division, it means factoring it and seeing if anything will cancel or reduce. But what's different about this problem is that it's asking me for those domains, okay? And we haven't had an example yet or a practice problem that has asked us to do those domains yet, okay? So let's let's go for it, see where we go, okay? So according to the definition of this, it should be f of x plus g of x. So in that case, it's gonna be two x plus one plus x squared minus 16. Now over here, there's no coefficient and no exponent to apply, so I'm gonna drop those parentheses. And over here, it's like distributing a, a positive one. So I get positive one x squared and negative 16, because positive one times negative 16 is a negative 16. 
And then if I combine my like terms, I get positive x squared, positive 2x, and negative 15. Now for f minus g, it means f of x minus g of x. So it means 2x plus 1 minus x squared minus 16. And so this one does not have a coefficient or an exponent to apply. So I'm going to drop my parentheses. But here I do have a negative 1 that does need to be distributed. So that becomes negative x squared. And then this becomes a positive 16. And if I combine my like terms here, I'm going to have negative x squared, positive 2x, and then 1 plus 16 is going to give me positive 17. Okay. Now we're going to move on to fg. So remember, this means f of x times g of x. So I'm going to have 2x plus 1 times x squared minus 16. Well, this is going to require me to FOIL or distribute. So if I distribute the 2x, I'm going to get 2x cubed minus 16, nope, minus 32x. Then I'm going to distribute the 1. So that's going to be plus 1x squared and minus 16. And all I can do pretty much is just order that in the correct order because none of these terms are like terms. So I cannot um, combine any like terms. Then finally, we have f over g. So that's f of x over g of x, which means 2x plus 1 all over x squared minus 16. Now, normally, you would try to factor that. But um, even though um, the denominator factors into x plus 4 and x minus 4, those don't exactly match what's at the top for me to like cancel it out, OK? So unfortunately, this one doesn't reduce. So this is the answer for part D, OK? It just, ha it just looks like a fraction that is stuck like that. Um, now for the domain, domain of f. Remember, the domain is always negative infinity to infinity unless you have a fraction or a radical. And since f does not have a fraction or a radical, its domain is negative infinity to infinity. And g is the same case. It does not have a fraction or a radical. So the domain of g is also negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So then if I want to find the intersection of that, what do those two intervals have in common? They're the same interval, so they have everything in common. They have the whole negative infinity to infinity in common, right? And so then this is going to be the domain of f plus g, the domain of f minus g, the domain of f times g, okay? This right here is the domain of all three of those arithmetic combinations. Now what I need to do is I also need to do part E, or I'm sorry, part F. So this is the answer to part E. For part F, it says, what is the domain of F over G? It's this same thing, but with the values that make G zero removed, okay? So what is going to make G of X equal to zero? And why is it G of X? Because G is in the denominator, okay? So what is going to make x squared minus 16 equal 0? That's the same as x squared equal to positive 16, which is the same as saying x equals plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. So I basically am going to have this interval. So the domain of f over g is going to be this interval. But you're going to take out where g equals 0. So let's see this, I'm gonna write it down, okay? So what we got is negative infinity to infinity for that intersection. But from this, we're gonna remove when x equals four or negative four. What is that gonna do to the interval, okay? I'll tell you what it's gonna do. You had the whole number line before, and now I'm telling you to take negative four out, so there's a hole there, and take positive four out, so there's a hole there. So you actually have three separate pieces of an interval now. 
So this turns into negative infinity to negative four, negative four to four, and four to positive infinity by removing those two values, okay? That's what we end up getting. And so this is the domain of F over G. Okay, so that was a really good one so you could see how those domains work. Now, let's go ahead and move on to practice four. So look, here's one with the radical and one with the fraction. So I want to definitely address those so that you can have an idea when you see them in your homework, okay? So for f plus g, that's f of x plus g of x. So that's going to be this function plus um, this function. Now, um, you can't add radicals with people that are not radicals. So the only thing I can do is just get rid of this parentheses, but I can't really combine any like terms. This is the result for when I add. Similarly, when I subtract, I'm going to have x squared plus three, and then I'm gonna subtract this house. I can't really combine anything because these guys are outside of the house, and then nine minus x is inside the house. So unfortunately, it just stays exactly like that. Now, when I multiply, I'm gonna have x squared plus three times the square root of nine minus x. About the only thing I can do is expand this, x squared times the radical, and then plus three times the radical. But that is as far as I can go with it because these are not like terms. This one has just a coefficient of a constant and this has a coefficient of an x squared. So they cannot be combined anymore. Um, and then finally, f over g, I'm gonna write this one over here. So you're basically writing F on the top and then G on the bottom, okay? And you really definitely cannot simplify that. You can't factor the top or the bottom, so it's just gonna stay just like that. Now, for the domains. The domain of F. F does not have any fractions or radicals in it, so its domain is automatically gonna be negative infinity to infinity. The domain of G, though, does have a radical. And we know with radicals that the radicand part has to be greater than or equal to zero. So if I minus nine on both sides, I get this statement. And if I divide by negative one, I get this statement. So X has to be less than nine. What does that look like in an interval? It would be from negative infinity to nine with a bracket, okay? And what do these two groups have in common? This group has everything from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, but this group only has negative infinity to nine. So they only have in common from negative infinity to nine. So my intersection is just gonna be from negative infinity to nine. Now, this is the domain of F plus G. This is the domain of F minus G. And it's even the domain of F times G. The only one it is not the correct domain for is F over G. So for the domain of F over G, we know it's going to be the intersection of the two domains, but then we're gonna take out where G of X equals zero. So in this case, that means negative infinity to nine but we're gonna remove some X values and I don't know what those X values are just yet, okay? So let's look at the fraction. We have to make sure that G of X does not equal zero. So if I take G of X equal to zero, that means the square root of nine minus X equals zero. And if I solve this, I'm gonna first solve by squaring both sides. That gives me nine minus X equal to zero. And then if I add the X over, I get nine equals X. So now I know what value makes G equal to zero. It's a nine. So I have this interval, but I need to take out the nine. And right now, because of the bracket, it's including the nine. In order for me to remove it, I would have to use a parentheses. 
And so this is the domain of F over G. I took out that one value that's gonna make G equal to zero. Okay, so now you have an example of what happens when you have a radical. Now, what happens when we have a fraction? So that is, it's a little blurry, but that says X over X plus five. So this is X over X plus five, okay? Um, and for F plus G, that's F of X plus G of X. So it's this guy plus this guy. Now you can't combine like terms. I would leave it like that. Um, I wouldn't mess with it in, at all. Um, some people try to get a common denominator, but it's not necessary. You can leave it like that. Then f of x minus g of x is going to be the f function minus the g function. And since g is only one term, I didn't put it in parentheses because then it would be unnecessary. However, if G had more than one term, I would definitely be putting it in parentheses so that I could make all of them opposite signs. Now F of G times, so that would be F of G, F of X times G of X, which would be this function times the X cubed. which if you put that over one, top times top gives you X to the fourth and one times anything is the same thing. And so this is what you get for the multiplication. And then finally the division, that would be F of X over G of X. So it would be X over X plus five all over X cubed. And in this case, to simplify the complex fraction, you would multiply by the common denominator between the top and the bottom. And the common denominator here is X plus five. And so then what happens is it cancels there and leaves you with just X, but at the bottom, you're left with X cubed times X plus five. Further, this X and this X can reduce. So you're left with the coefficient of one and then only X squared times x plus five, okay? So this is the simplified version of the um, f over g. Now, domains. The domain of f. The domain of f is not all real numbers because it is a fraction. It's all real numbers except for the value or values that make the denominator zero. And in this case, x plus five equals zero when x equals negative five. So the domain should be all real numbers except negative five, which in an interval looks like negative infinity to negative five, and then negative five to positive infinity. But negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, but with a negative five taken out, okay? Then f of g, and g does not have any radicals or um, fractions, the domain of G is all real numbers. And what do these two guys have in common? Um, they're gonna have F's domain in common. This one's bigger, it's the same thing, except this one includes the negative five and that one doesn't. So since I can only put what they have in common, I cannot have the negative five because that's not in common to both F and G. So it will take on F's degree. I remember this is the domain for F plus G. This is the domain for F minus G. And it's even the domain of F times G. The only one it's not the domain for, it's really only part of it, is the domain of F over G. Because you would get that intersection, but then you would have to remove any places where G equals zero. So in this case, it would be negative infinity negative five union, negative five to infinity, but we would have to remove um, the places where G of X equals zero. Now let's see, where does G of X equals zero? That would be when X cubed equals zero. And if I take the cube root, I would get X equals zero. 
So I have to take out where x equals zero. So now I'm think about this on the number line. Here's negative five, and you already cannot include negative five, and you have everything here and everything there. But now I'm telling you to take out zero as well. Zero's over here somewhere, and so now that's gonna have a hole around it too. So what does your domain become? It becomes negative infinity to negative five, then from negative five to zero, and then from zero to infinity. And this is the domain of f over g. Okay, and so now you have an example of what happens when you um, have no fractions or radicals in f or g. We've also seen what happens when you have radicals in one of them, and we have seen what happens when you have fractions in one of them. So hopefully that is enough information for you to decipher your way through the homework section. Of course, as always, if you have any questions while you're working on those homework assignments, please text me or sign up for a um, tutoring session using the Calendly link at the bottom of our homepage. But other than that, this section is complete.